All right, so I'm gonna do an oil change on my uh, Triumph uh, Street Twin. I just got this bike yesterday, went on a ride today, and uh, so I'm gonna change the oil now. So, um, down the bottom here, let's see, let's bring this up. You see, it has a right here. That's the oil plug. That's an eight millimeter Allen, and here's the oil filter. Um, hopefully, I have the uh, the correct oil filter. The oil filters for bikes they're pretty universal, and my uh, my oil filter cap wrench here uh, fits on it. So I have a Fram. Um, so hopefully, this one fits. Uh, like I said, most most oil oil filters are pretty universal on bikes. The threads. So I'm gonna see if I could if that one fits or not. Go underneath there. Oh, it's tight. So, oops. Wrong direction. That's why it's so tight. <laughs> oh, even in the right direction it was tight. Okay. So I don't like I don't like to tighten things that tight, especially with the Allen Allen head. Allen hands are not very, you know, not very sturdy. They strip easy, so I'm not a big fan of that. Um, so, oops, let's see. I gotta do this. To see better. Man, my tripod just. But this my. What the problem is is my gimbal is too big. My gimbal, the handle is you know it's like that tall, and, and that's why that's why the camera is up so high. So unfortunately, that's just how it goes. I think this oil is pretty clean. I think this guy last did a service on this bike at um at 500 miles, the break-in service, and now it's at 2300, I think. So it should be okay. Um, that oil looks yeah, it's not too bad. See how much oil this thing holds. It seems like it holds quite a bit, so it's probably uh, I'm guessing probably about a gallon of oil. So I hopefully I have enough oil uh, on my uh... yeah. It looks like yeah, it looks like it's ooh, yeah. Definitely looks like a gallon or so. So I might not have enough oil. I might have to go to, go to Walmart and get some more oil. Um, so this dog bowl here holds. I think it holds 1,800 cc's. If I can remember right, 1800 cc's, 1000 cc's is, no that's not right, that's not right, 1800 cc's, no, it's 1000 cc's, is 1 liter, so this thing holds, uh, damn I can't remember how much it holds now, but it holds, uh, I think it holds like 2.5 gallons or something like that. Um, so the ground chewing out, some, well I wiped the, Bolt, you know, the oil drain bolt down. It's very, uh, very low profile. All right, see so this thing is hollow. And looking at the crush washer, yeah, it's potentially you could use this. We use this one. It's not crushed. It's not crushed down that much, but uh, I'm gonna see if I have another one. I, have to sh I should have some more. I'll be right back. I just have to wait for the So I have some crush washers. These crush washers I have are actually from Honda. This is actually from Honda cars. I tried the Honda uh, motorcycle crush washer and the, the, the diameter here was actually a little bit too small. But the Honda car crush washer uh, fits it perfectly. So I'm gonna use that. So still flowing. Let's see if I could get my hand in there and get the filter out. Hopefully it's not cinched on there too tight. Man, the way that it's the way that the filter sits in there, it sits flush with the uh, oil pan, so you can't even. Normally you would hand tight those things, so I can't even hand tight it if I wanted to. Um, 
because of that. So we'll see how this goes. Oh shit. Oh come on, this thing's dipping. God oh, damn it, it's dipping. Fuck. That's not good. That's not good. This thing's not quite fitting is I think they just whoever wrenched it on last time they just made it too uh too tight. Oh wait a minute, I got it. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm actually pushing the the filter wrench right on to the cap. Let me take this off and show you guys. What I did was to be able to loosen it. I still I still think it's pretty damn tight. They Obviously, they used a wrench on it, and they probably used a little bit too much torque there, I think. Um, God damn it, come out. Okay. I have to leave that cap on there. God damn it. Now my thing's gonna get all, all oily. Freaking A. So, the, you know, I think the shop that, that, you know, the mechanic that put that filter on there used a little bit too much uh, torque on the wrench. Because you know, oil filters have that has that oil ring, so you don't need the you don't need the uh, all that much torque. So I need to kind of tap on this cap here to to um, to free it. I'll do that in a minute. Let me uh, drain it out as much as I can. So man, that's a lot of oil. Actually, that's a good thing. That means the more oil, uh, the better. Some bikes don't have that much oil at all. Uh, you know, when I had a CB600 inline four, that thing held a gallon of, of oil. It held as much oil as a as a as a Honda car, you know. So, so I was surprised about that when I first did the oil change on that on that bike. All my bikes I ever had after that always had less held held less. Like my Yamaha 850, that thing only holds. Uh, I think it only holds two and a half. Two and a half, maybe three bottles of oil. Um, and my 300 only holds about one bottle of oil, or one and a half bottles of oil. Um, let me see if I could tap this thing off. So basically, what I did to, to get that um, filter off is that you know, when it's when it's uh, when it's on on here, and it and sometimes it slips. What you do, what I did was I actually push down, I push down on this so that way it's just perfectly flush with the filter, and it, so it didn't wouldn't it wouldn't cock cock over and uh, and slip. So that's how I got it off. Um, All over. So this thing definitely uses a lot of oil. I don't think I have enough. I have to go to Walmart, stop at Walmart, and get some more. So let's see if the thread's the same. Okay, here's the magic moment here. So here's the Fram, right? The Triumph. Cast. I oh, always the Castrol oil filter. So looking here. Up here, oh look at this thing, it doesn't have, doesn't have, uh, let's actually spin this over. Looking at this thing, it doesn't have that much uh, um, holes. So basically, what that says is that it doesn't flow as, as, as much. You know, this thing has more holes, it flows more. Um, yeah, that flows more. So so how it works is that these holes here, the oil goes in, in there and, and it goes out from the big hole. So this one with with more holes and bigger holes, it flows more than the than this other one does. So this is from Castro. So this one is uh, it's a Fram, Fram PH whatever whatever. Uh, 
uh, looking inside here, well, this thing has a spring. This thing actually has a coil spring on the for the relief valve, so that's kind of cool. Whereas this one is not a it's, it's a spring, but it's not a coil spring. It's um, I don't know what's, what's the name of this type of spring. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, anyways, uh, looks like this one's gonna flow a little better because of this, but but that's not the only thing that limits the flow, right? If you look inside where um, where this uh, perforated uh, sleeve inside on the Castro, it actually has more more holes on that one. It looks like almost well. I would say double. I would say uh, it was. I would say it has more holes. Just a little bit more. The holes are, are tighter together, whereas this one the holes are a little bit more spaced out apart. And the holes on that one in here actually looks a little bit bigger too. So who knows? So as far as flow wise, I don't know. They might be just a toss up. So looking at the threads, they look the same. So we'll see if they are or not. I'm gonna spin this on real fast. Actually, I need to wipe it down. Wipe, wipe underneath the engine down. Um, let me get some oil. So I use Shell Rotella. Actually, I use this on my air compressor, so I need a. I only have three and a half liters. Or three and a half. Yeah, three and a half liters. So hopefully that might be enough, I don't know. If not, I'm gonna have to go to Walmart and get some more. Okay, so this thing is still dripping a little bit, not too not too much. So let's uh pull this over and actually no, I won't pull it. Yeah, yeah, no, I will. Because I don't want it to, you know, push it back. No, no space. So I wanna wipe you know the oil contact point on the engine. Make sure that you know there's no debris right there. Uh, oh, look at this! So I put it off and see what's missing. The O-ring is missing. So, so the mechanic that, that put this O-ring on, he did not loop the, uh, he did not loop the O-ring. That's why you loop the O-ring. So if, if the O-ring's there and I put this back on with the other, other O-ring, now there'll be double O-rings and it will leak. So this is actually the first time I've seen this. I've never seen that before because. Maybe because I do my own oil changes and I do it to do it properly, so I never had that problem. But this one, so that's one of the reasons why I don't take my bikes to to uh, to dealerships because the mechanics there are just I just don't trust them. They just do shoddy work, man. It's just cause all that money you're paying. How much you know? They charge like a hundred and something, like a hundred twenty dollars an hour uh, shop labor, and that's kind of that's the kind of work they do. You know, it's like come on now, man. No, you know, you're all supposed to be professionals. Should be professional, you know, your work should be professional. But you do shoddy work like that, you know, you don't have no respect from people. Have no trust. So gotta do, do things properly. All right. So this is what that mechanic missed. Was, you know, dab a little oil on your pinky. Dab a little oil on your pinky and loop. Loop the seal, man. That's all. That's all it needs. It's only. That's only like you know. How long did that take? You no, know, extra fifteen seconds. I know you guys are like on the clock and everything, but still. Mm -hmm. it spins right on. Perfect. It's a, it's good. So this this Fram oil filter. Um, Obviously, for this one, this they say motorcycle, but the same the same size you could get uh, for the uh, for the Mazda Miata. So Mazda Miata one, I think it's uh, shorter. So if you get the uh, you know if you want to get a nicer oil filter, uh, get the uh, Fram. What is it? What's this, what do they call it? The Fram Super Guard, a Tough Guard, or whatever it is. You know, the the higher end one, the synthetic one. That'd be better. You know, better than this one. Um, and the, the size that you want is the one that, that's for the Miata. And that, you know, you're know, looking at this short size, that's that's what the Miata is, it's, it's a shorter size. They also make a, one that's, everything's the same except for that it's a little bit longer, probably about three quarters of an inch longer. And it wouldn't work on this bike because it would stick out beyond the oil pan. But like on my other bikes, I actually use that one instead uh, because you know you get a little bit of extra filtration uh, medium. Uh, so, you, so basically you get better flow, uh, uh, you get to go a little bit longer 
because there's more filtering, so it takes longer to clog up, etc., etc. Uh, it holds a little bit more oil as well, so that's even better. So everything's better about that. Uh, only thing is that one doesn't work for this because that oil pan right here, you know, this charge filter is flush, so then you can't use anything longer. Otherwise, it'll stick too low and and uh, you know maybe you're riding over a bump or something and, and it, it could hit your oil filter, right? And you're gonna lose all your oil and you're gonna crash because all your oil is now sitting in your rear wheel. If you crash, if you don't crash, you might seize the engine, whatever, right? So, so uh, use use the shorter one, the, the one that's meant for the uh, Miata, that would work. Um, and I think, I think it's better than this, this thing too. This thing is kind of, kind of generic. I'm not sure why I bought this thing. I think I just saw it on the shelf and like, oh, look at that. Walmart has, uh, Prime motorcycle filter. Let me check it out. So I think that that was that was that reason right there. So here, since I can't reach it with my hands, I'm gonna what I'm, what I'm gonna do is instead of holding it holding it out like that, that's too too much leverage. It's gonna be too tight. I'm gonna hold the wrench down right here where I do have a grip, and I'm just gonna tighten it from right here. That way, there's no um, you know it doesn't get over torqued. That that will also help me. Oh come on, really? This thing's too big. Is it too big? It feels like it's slipping. Yeah, it's slipping. Okay, I'm not to... No, it's too big. This 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 uh. Two is too big. Just like it's like a few millimeters too big. It's totally slipping. And I'm pushing it all the way up too. God dang it. Okay, I might have to go to uh, Walmart and get the proper oil filter. Get the proper oil filter and, uh, and I, mean, I think I need some more oil as well. That, that totally sucks. Put it in the plug. Put it in the plug so I can pull this oil pan off. Damn, that sucks. Really sucks. So now with the oil in the in the pan here, I am actually looking at the reflection. I can see what I'm doing just looking by looking at the reflection. I don't think I've ever did that before. I think this is the first. Okay, because I'm using this big dog bowl. Dog bowl to, uh, so, so there's a lot of surface area there for me to see. So, so this is definitely a good gallon here. Maybe more. Okay, let me tighten up that drain plug real quick. Remember, the drain plug has a crush washer, so you don't need much torque. You could actually feel the thing uh, talking down. So here, my wrench is pretty much perpendicular, and it's you know it's it's uh, um, it stopped. So I'm gonna see how much it how much of a turn you need. Let's see before it actually fully stops. So that's oh it's about an eighth of a turn. It's not even a quarter. It's an eighth of a turn. Yeah, that's it. Eighth of a turn, and uh, it seems like that's all you need. It's eighth of a turn. Yeah, just eighth of a turn. No more than that. Okay, let's look. At, let's see about this damn, this damn, uh, this damn oil filter. Damn, there's no way I could. Uh, I think actually, I think that might be enough. I just kind of slowly. Yeah, I think that's enough. It could be that because this thing, this thing got all oily, it just it's just slipping. Cause I can swear this thing is meant for that size. Um, yeah, I think that's enough. Um, yeah, I think that's enough. I believe I'm okay. I believe I'm okay. So that's it. Okay. Oh, actually, no, that's not it. I need to feel the oil here. So, speed that up. Oops. 
So there's actually a, a peep eye here, so you can actually see your level. Um, actually, I don't think I need it right now. Let me get my funnel. I don't have my funnel with me. Where's my funnel? Let's open this up. This is the fuel, fuel, fuel plug. Let me get my funnel. So I've got my funnel, wipe it down, wipe it down, it's all dirty. Oops, funnel's too big. No, this thing's too big. Can I get the smaller one? Smaller one, let me wipe that down. See, sitting there and collecting dust and you know I put a cover on it so it doesn't get all dirty in the in the funnel. But still. Alright, so size is smaller now. It fits in there. Um let's go this way. So let's go back to the uh site view down here and obviously it's not, you're not gonna actually see it right because the bike's not level you know I need to level out the bike uh, do that um, I would do that uh, once I pour in some oil okay so I think I, I could probably pour in the whole entire three and a half liters here and probably be okay still still probably lack some oil So again, I'm using a uh, Shell Rotella T6 5W40. It is a Group 3 synthetic, uh, so it's not a true synthetic like a Group 4, because the Group 4 synthetics, they call them true synthetics because they, those things, th that oil is made from the ground up. I mean, they don't use any, you know, they're, they're not, they're using raw materials to, to make, make the oil molecules, whereas this Group 3 synthetic, they're taking oil from the ground, you know, petroleum, and they're they're manipulating the molecules. They, ma they manipulate the molecules so much that when you know, oh, you know, in the past, group three was was considered non-synthetic, uh, but like, you know, in Europe, it's still considered non-synthetic. You know, group four is considered synthetic, but in the U.S., uh, Mobile One sued Castro and said that Castro oil is not synthetic because you know, it's a group three, not a group four, and Castro won that lawsuit against mobile one or mobile uh, and how that worked how that how the judge figured out was that the judge said that the group three is manipulated so much that it's you know it's not natural anymore so it might as well be a synthetic so that's how that goes about and, and realistically you know it's, again it's just manipulated so much that it works really well so, you know it's not like it's not like a group four or excuse me uh, not like a group two where it's you know regular regular uh, regular oil. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually level the bike out a little bit. Actually, the bike's not not on the level surface. So, so this is actually not even a, an accurate uh, reading. Let's see. Oh, it's not in gear. Let me put it back in gear. It's not in gear. Now it's in gear. In gear, this is not gonna be an accurate reading because this because I'm on a downward slope, you know, just a moment ago. You saw saw the back row backwards, so so now side to side is about just about balance, and it's halfway in the uh, in the in the red red circle because the bike is 
actually tilted like, like, like so, you know, I mean, I'm obviously I'm exaggerating. So that probably means that uh, the oil level is actually higher than, than, than it, if, I, if I have on level surface. Oil level will actually be a little bit higher. It'll probably be closer to the top of the red circle. But I'm actually going to go a little bit above that. You know, bottom of the red circle, I think, is uh, means oil level is too low. Top of the red circle should be okay. Um, maybe even top of the, that window. Let, let's see. So right now it is it's just about level, and it's just it's about a millimeter, maybe two millimeters above the red circle. So I think I'm I'm probably okay there. Uh, but then again, I haven't started the engine yet, so so the uh, um, so the oil filter is still completely empty. So let's start up the engine real quick. Uh, and circulate the tube for about a minute, then then we could check the oil level again. Let's do that. seconds or so. Let's see. Let's see what the oil level's at. Oh, it dropped. Oops. I'm going to put it back into neutral. I was forgetting about neutral. Let's see that. Not put it in neutral. Put it into gear so it doesn't roll, roll back. Okay. Let's see. Let's see how much it dropped. Ooh, it dropped quite a bit. So earlier I had mentioned it was about two millimeters above the red circle. Now it's about, let's see, it's about two millimeters below the red circle. So yeah, so usually when I feel it, and, and before I start the engine, I usually feel it, most bikes I usually feel it to the top of the screen, and, one, and once I start it up and everything, it usually comes out to be perfect. So so my hunches, I think it's right with, the, with this bike as well. the rest of this oil probably I think so three and a half liters looks like so that's the rest of it so three and a half liters so I guess I don't need to go to Walmart to get a oil filter or a more oil so it looks like I'm good Probably be to the top of the red. Let's see, it is just about side to side. It's just about right there, and it's, yep, just exactly at the top of the red. So again, remember, just I'm on a slight incline. I'm on a slight incline that way. So if I level this out, um, let's see, if I level this out, it should the, the oil level should go a little bit higher. So I'm, I'm perfect. I'm not gonna. Mess with it. So there you go. And again, my the incline I'm on is not you know hard, it's not that much of an incline. It's a uh, hardly any incline whatsoever. It's almost I wouldn't say it's flat, but it's but you know it's not uh, not much. So it's, I'm I'm okay with it. I can live with it. Okay, cap up my cap. Dang it. Of the oil cap, all right? The oil cap, and and that's it. I'm gonna call it good. All right, so that's the oil change. Actually, let's look at the oil itself. So it looks clean. I don't see any crap in it. I don't see any metallicness. So there's no metal in there. You know, usually when you see like 
like little speckle thing that's 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 the metallic look that means there's a uh, there's metal metal in the you know in the engine so it looks pretty clean um this thing is it's pretty dark i mean it's not black black but it's pretty dark so remember it, this thing got changed at, at around 500 miles originally so that was you know almost 2,000 miles ago Again, this guy doesn't ride this bike too much. You know, he has it a year already, and he only boated, you know, two, a little bit over two thousand miles. Um, I'm not sure, you know, when he first put that first five hundred miles. He, that's probably when you know, usually when people get a new bike, they ride it more in the beginning than they do later. So, uh, so I think that first five hundred miles, he probably put it within the first month for sure. Um, and the rest of it is been sitting for for almost a year. All right, so there you have it. Street twin, changing oil. Wow, 30 minutes long. All right, thanks for watching.